Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to a brand new video. Today we are going to make a really, really nice Martin Odegaard artwork. I said a lot of you guys like my previous uh, premiere video that I, that I did. I'm going to put this one up as a premiere as well so I can get a little bit of uh, connection between you guys and I just love that so be sure if you, if you have any questions be sure to just put them in the chat because I love all the feedback that I get from you guys and don't forget to, to like and subscribe for more of these tutorials. So I'm just going to go ahead and go onto Google for the first step of this artwork. Last time I already had my Lukaku uh, photo, but right now we're just going ahead and going to Footy Renders, which is a totally, totally free site where you can get awesome renders of players and just, yeah, just every player you can possibly think of. So what are we going to do? We're going to go at England, let's go to Arsenal and let's see if we can get some nice Martin Odegaard pictures. This one already looks pretty nice. So right now you can get all the tags that are on this player as well, which are Arsenal, Europa League, Norway and Odegaard. So we're just going to go and, go and click Odegaard. And let's right now find the best picture. I kind of like this one. So let's open this in a new tab. And let's try to get another one. Hmm, I, I, I kind of like this. Just like the back of his, of his shirt. Yeah, I kind of like this one as well. So let's download both of them. These are totally free. So yeah, it's just awesome. All right, so right now we're in Photoshop and we're just going to go and make a new document. The width that I use is always 1080 pixels wide and the height that I use is 1350 pixels of height. So let's go ahead and create it. Alright, so let's right now grab the nice pictures that we got from the footy render site. Let's just simply load them in. Alright, let's scale them up a little bit. Alright. And let's get the other one in there as well. Let's make this one a little bit smaller. And do it like this. Alright, let's remove some parts of the big Martin Odegaard. The parts that we're not going to use in this artwork, of course. Let's do that with grabbing the brush tool and sizing it up a little bit. Let's reduce the flow just a little bit. And let's right now with black, let's paint some of the areas away that we're not going to use. Alright. Just paint it away, really simple. Let's make the brush right now a little bit bigger. And let's reduce the flow to around 1%. And let's right now make the transition, transition really subtle so you get this nice effect. Just keep on painting until you have what you kind of like. Let's right now grab our little Martin Odegaard and go into filter and let's apply a very small camera raw filter to boost, yeah, just boost the contrast and make everything look a little bit nicer. All right, let's bring up the clarity a little bit. Let's go ahead into curve and just press two times to make a nice contrasty look. Let's see the before and after. It does add a little bit. Let's reduce the vibrance just a little bit and let's bring up the highlights and let's reduce the shadows. And let's right now click the old button and let's right now click camera raw and just drag it to the big Martin Odegaard and you will see that the effect will automatically be applied to that one as well. So right now we're going to make a little bit of a shadow and I, sh and I saw that a lot of you guys were asking how do I make my shadows? Well, it's actually really, really easy. You have different techniques, of course, of making them. Uh, what I do uh, nowadays is I just make a new solid color. Let's make it something near black. I don't use really, really black because I just think this one, this looks better. Let's right now flip our layer mask with Command or Control I. And let's right now take our brush tool. Let's make it a lot smaller around yeah around 40 40 or 50 pixels will work let's make it a lot smaller with this and let's boost the flow to 100 percent 
and let's right now make sure our call it our color fill is behind of our subject and let's right now just paint be sure you have white selected you can press this button or you can simply press the X key on your keyboard you can also just during the artwork you can just click the X button and it will change very quickly which is very efficient all right and let's right now paint with white a really really nice and subtle shadow underneath him let's right now make it a little better better I'm sorry let's right now press X to paint with black and let's paint like the shadow in front of his foot away let's just perfect it a little bit let's right now put press command T or control T and let's just move it up a little bit so it looks a lot better right now so right now let's make a new solid color let's make it almost near black again let's turn around the layer mask again now let's make our size the size of our brush a lot bigger something like this let's put the flow to 60 percent and let's right now just click of course you have to you, right now we got black selected let's turn that around and let's right now paint a, a little bit of a bigger shadow all right so right now we see that this foot is floating Let's make sure it looks like it looks like it, this one is also put onto the ground. Let's make it around 40%. Let's put it a little bit in front. Maybe the flow around 40%. Something like this. Yeah, this looks nice. And let's right now take around 300 pixels of size. And let's put the flow to 30%. And let's paint another and a bigger shadow this is a little bit too intense at least the biggest one is so let's put it to around 10 percent and right now it looks like it's actually attached to the ground let's just reduce it a little bit let's put the opacity to around 70 and let's put the small one to about 90 percent so you can right now let's group this simply select both layers and click this group icon so right now you can see the before and after so i think we have to refine it just a little little bit so let's select the biggest one because right now it doesn't really make sense that there's a shadow right here so let's simply remove that with just a small brush flow at 10 percent oh make sure you have black selected of course and just simply paint it away So you can see the before and after. It's a nice subtle, subtle shadow. Let's make this one a little bit bigger. All right. So let's right now add some highlights and some shadows to our both subjects to make sure it's really popping. So the way to do that is simply make a new solid color, clip it to the layer down below and let's right now go into our layer style panel. This trick I also did in the last video of Lukaku, so if you follow that, you will know what I'm going to do right now. So let's right now move the slide over to the left side. Right now it's really hard, as you can tell, but let's simply click our Alt button and slide it over so you get a really nice and subtle effect. This helps to bring up the highlights really easy, really quickly. If you want to remove some areas, you can simply paint it away with black, but I kind of like it as it is right now. All right, and let's right now do exactly the same thing, but for the blacks. Let's make a black solid color, clip it to the layer down below. And of course, right now, right now let's take the white slide and bring it over to the black side. Let's press the old button and shove it away towards the black side so you get a real nice and subtle effect right now i think we do have to remove some areas so let's turn it around let's take our brush tool again let's get a general brush let's make a little bit smaller and let's right now start with painting some of the areas back as you can see we have to do that with white right now you don't really see it as you're painting it 
But trust me, it's there, you know? So, all right. I like how this is looking. It is a subtle effect, but it does something. All right, what are we going to do right now is we're just going to do the same steps, but for the big Urgard. I see that like his cutout is not really perfect or like the transition is not really perfect. So let's simply take our brush tool again and let's simply paint some of the areas away that I don't want to see. I like it. I like that it's a little bit of a glowy effect as well as the background is like white, but we're just going to change that like in a couple of minutes. So yeah, that's not going to stay. <laughs> But I like I like the I like the effect right now. All right, then let's right into the same steps, but for the big Odegaard. Let's make a new solid color. Let's make it white. Let's clip it to the layer down below. You can do it by pressing the Alt button or simply clicking Create Layer Mask. Let's go into the Layer Style panel. Let's put this one all the way to the whites. And this looks pretty nice. You see the before and after, it does a lot. And right now let's do the same things for our black to make shadows a little bit nicer. All right, let's take the white slide and put it all the way to the black side. Let's right now paint some of the areas away. We just have to adjust the mask a little bit. Now let's right now paint a little bit of the areas back with the white key of course it gives a real nice depth feeling of depth I think so yeah I kind of like it let's right now just refine our mask a little bit more because I don't think it's really perfect so let's make it flow around two or three percent and let's right now just paint it away even more all right so let's right now go ahead and make a pretty nice brush. I like I like the figures on his shirt. So what are we going to do? We're simply going to make a new brush for that. Let's simply let's simply select our pen tool and we're just going to go and go over the lines of the pattern of his shirt. All right, like this. Let's right now make a new selection out of this. Oh no, let's maybe make a shape so it won't get pixeled, of course. Let's right now make that bigger. Something like this. Yeah, that looks nice. Let's right now go into the rectangle tool so we can change the color. Let's make it black. And let's right now select the outlines by pressing this icon and holding the command or control button. And let's right now go ahead and define a new brush preset so right now we got this as a brush i like that so let's right now make a very very nice background out of it let's just go ahead and play around with with this brush of course i want it in black and white because we will adjust the colors later on let's simply paint some of these symbols back I like how this looks already. Right now make it a little bit or a lot bigger maybe. Let's maybe go for 1000 pixels and let's maybe put it in front. Let's put it maybe around here. Let's see, I'm just going to try and do something. I don't know if it will work. Let's go into filter and blur and put some card and blur it so we get like a kind of in-depth look let's put it on like eight pixels maybe it does something it kind of does the effect but let's just make it smaller so maybe it will be a little bit more subtle let's maybe add a little bit more of gauge and blur let's make it a little bit smaller again and I kind of like this. I kind of like this in that feel that it has right now. Right now what I want is I want kind of a glow coming from like behind of this Erdegaard. So what are we going to do for that? Let's simply click on this icon. 
with holding control let's right now make a new solid color so of course everything is black right now I don't really want that let's right now select our layer mask you have to turn it around with command or control shift I because of course you have to remove some areas so this looks a lot better all right let's right now take the solid color and let's make it white so you can see already what the white lines coming from like behind of him let's right now select the layer mask let's go into filter let's go blur gaussian blur and let's put a little bit of glow coming from like behind of him something around like 15 pixels what best i think yeah i think this looks pretty nice so let's do the same but for the little other guard because i kind of want the shadow coming from behind of him as well so let's make a new solid color let's make it white let's select the layer mask let's right now go into blur and gaussian blur of course this one is a little bit smaller so let's make it around 10 pixels maybe maybe reduce the opacity to around 70 and i really really like this i really really do let's right now put the shadows in front of course because we don't want that to be affected let's rename it because you because you, you can see if you put it behind it kind of fades away and we don't want that we want our nice shadow to to show so what are we going to do right now i kind of like this already i kind of like the in-depth look we've got going on right here let's maybe just adjust that a little bit make it a little bit bigger and let's right now select some colors from the big Erdegaard. i like this almost oh yeah this really dark red and let's right now take a bright red and let's right now make a layer mask in the back not a solid color of course but let's make a gradient map oh right now you can really see his arm <laughs> okay we have to adjust that really quickly let's simply do that with just the brush tool let's make it big let's put the flow to around 100 percent all right so let's just paint it back and i kind of don't have a problem with it being like back I just want his arm to show completely not this transparent way so let's just adjust that really quickly this arm has to show as well and this has to fade away of course we have to put the gradient map on the arrow in front as well so let's just simply do that and oh, what I'm going to do first, by the way, is I'm, I'm going to put some subtle shadows onto the background as well, because I think it's missing that. So let's right now just paint with black and white. And let's simply just paint around the edge of our arrows with the flow around 1%. So it gives like this kind of 3D feel, you know. And I really think it helps to sell the whole of the artwork. Let's do the same with whites. Let's make a new layer so we can adjust that later. Let's simply go around the middle. All right, and let's right now just reduce the opacity to around 60. So you can see it kind of gives this 3D feeling to it. And I kind of like that. So what I want is right now, let's just, I'm not going to go for the messy textures. Let's try concrete wall texture. Because that always gives me some nice results. I kind I kind of like this. Because it has like a little bit of grain in it. So let's just open this image in a new tab. This is really small, so <laughs> we're not going to use that. Let's see if we can find something else. Oh, this is really nice. This is really nice. So let's just copy that. And let's go ahead and put it right here. 
let's make it the size of our canvas and I really like this alright so I have kind of an idea you know um, I'm just going to go and select the outlines of our arrows I'm going ahead and I'm going to choose a solid color let's make one almost near black I want by the way the gradient map to be clipped to this layer and I want a new one to be clipped to the layer of the background so right now I'm going to go for the color fill and let's choose Gaussian blur so you get this subtle shadow so let's right now just with the arrows let's put it a little bit underneath it all right something like this let's maybe choose even more Gaussian blur yes yeah, something around 15 will work let's right now simply just reduce the opacity to around 40 I think so you get this kind of like 3d look and I kind of like that let's maybe reduce it a little bit more around 30 all right so let's right now go ahead and search even some more textures let's try some messy dry paint texture because these always give me some nice results so let's see what we can find kind of like let's see i kind of like this one not because it's in red but just yeah it just has some nice texture to it let's put that one over the whole of the background let's make it size let's turn it first and then secondly make it the size of our canvas simply with the transform keys let's right now put a gradient map on it let's put it in black and white let's clip it to the layer down below let's select both layers and go and convert it into a smart object let's right now choose let's see what are we going to pick multiply all screen let's turn around the colors maybe maybe that will work so let's try just putting it on the background maybe that does something maybe reduce the opacity to around 20 yeah it's add, it adds a little bit of subtle effect so I kind of like that one as well all right right now his hand is looking really weird <laughs> Because it's not right like attached to anything so let's adjust layer mask once again and let's simply just paint it away a little bit so it's not like this intense let's just paint it away let's put the flow to around two percent so it goes a little bit faster what are we going to do right now let's add a subtle green texture like I kind of want that so let's just search subtle texture subtle texture texture yeah that will work definitely and i like this one i really really like this one because it's really subtle and it will boost our artwork that extra notch all right so let's put it down let's make it a little bit bigger let's make it sign to our canvas and let's right now very easy choose a blend mode multiply and you can see it adds a little texture it also removes some of the highlights so let's bring up the levels panel and let's take this slide over to the right and right now you can see you just keep the brightness old paper i kind of like this I kind of like this one let's turn let's get this one into Photoshop this is way too big of course and so let's make it smaller let's turn it around and let's make it the size of our canvas all right I think this is going to look nice but of course I'm not sure because not really everything is going according to plan today so let's reverse it all right let's right now click on both layers and convert it into a smart object and let's choose a blend mode 
mod multiply. Right now it's a little bit too dark, so let's bring up our layers panel with holding Command or Control L, and let's right now put this light up a little bit more to the left, around 200 I think will work best, so you don't lose the effect of the texture of course. So right now it looks like a real old and vintage photo, and I kind of like it that way. So let's right now go ahead and select all the layers. Let's convert them into a smart object. This can take a while, I already said that in the last video of course. But yeah, let's see what we can build from this in the camera raw filter. Alright, so this looks nice. Let's add a camera raw filter to it. So let's see how we can make this artwork even better. So let's bring up the clarity a little bit. I'm just going to adjust something real quick as I think like the texture is a little bit too intense. So I'm just going to go ahead and select... I think this is the last texture we added. Maybe we have to reduce this one also to like 60%. Alright. And let's right now select the levels panel and let's play around with the controls we have right in here. Let's put this to 2 and let's see the before and after. Yeah, that really does a lot actually. So let's right now go ahead. Okay, let's save it of course because we have to update the smart object. And this looks a lot better, better already. So let's go back into our camera raw filter. We already have the filter right, near, right here, so we don't have to make a new one. And let's right now go ahead and go over every, every slide to see what works best. Let's boost the highlights. Let's reduce the shadows a little bit. Let's add a bit a little bit of white. Remove some of the vibrance. And let's add a little bit of saturation. Let's see before and after you see it does a lot let's right now go into curves and let's add a little bit of film noise all right let's add a little bit of sharpening and let's go into the color mixer of course we most of the colors are red so we have to only adjust this layer uh, the red U. so let's see what looks best i think minus 25 looks nice Let's see what we can do with this all the way to the left. Yeah, I don't really like that. I kind of like it. Plus 10. The luminance, of course. Something plus 25 looks nice. Do we have some more? Of course, some oranges for the skin. Oh yeah, I like this. I really like this because it's it gives like a, a red glowing effect on the face. Maybe these ones as well. No, that doesn't really do anything. So it looks nice like this. Let's go into the color grading. Let's select the color for our shadows. Kind of like this, but let's adjust that a little bit. Around 20 will do the job, I think. Let's choose something for the highlights to boost the red even more. Something around 20 again, I think it will look best. All right. Let's go, let's balance it out a little bit. Minus nine will work. And let's blend it well. Let's add a little bit of vignette right now. Or a lot of it, because <laughs> it's a large canvas, of course. Let's right now add a little bit of grain. All right, and another piece of vignette. Alright, something like this looks really, really nice. Let's right now play around with the calibration. Minus 10 is enough, I think. Green ones. Let's see what will work best. Let's make, what are we going to choose? Really bright or like a little bit more, yeah, mysterious. Kind of like the bright look on this. So plus 20. Blue ones, I kind of like the minus 15. And let's right now press OK. 
Okay, right now you can really see the effect of the camera raw filter. Let's see before. This already looks pretty nice, but with the camera raw filter, it's really, really awesome. So, okay, I kind of like this one. All right, guys, I think we're almost done. What I kind of want to add right now is like some old vintage film noise. And let's see. Oh, yeah, I really, really like this ones. These ones, yeah. I really like this. Oh, yeah, this one will work awesome, I think. Let's put it into our artwork. All right, let's make it a lot bigger, of course. Let's flip it horizontal. Let's flip it vertical. All right, let's right now choose screen. I want it to be really black, so let's bring up our levels panel again because I only want the white ones. And let's right now make a mask out of it and let's paint some of the areas away where I don't want it to show. Also right here, it doesn't have to be this intense. So right now it's not really perfect, so I'm just going to make some slight adjustments to make just everything really work really well together. Of course, you can see what is wrong with this as well, so around like his legs, yeah, the glow is not really perfect. So let's simply just reduce that. Let's just bring back our highlights and let's just reduce some of it with our brush. All right, something like this will make it a lot better. And right near, right here at the bottom, with the, with the camera raw, you can really see, yeah, it's just really weird. So let's just change that again. Let's choose this layer and let's simply just paint it away so you don't get this effect. So right now his arm is kind of weird as well, so we're just going to change that also. What I'm going to do for that is like some dust texture. Let's find something nice. Mm, let's see. Let's see what I can do. I don't really like any of these. So let's just go and Maybe some mists. Yeah, something like this will work awesome. All right, let's add that to the whole of the background. We want it to be in front of the big guy. So let's put it right here. It's really small, so let's make it a lot bigger, of course. Let's right now put the blend mode screen onto it so it blends with the background. Let's turn it a little bit. And I kind of want it to be behind of the arrows. So let's take the arrows layer. Let's flip it around with com control or command shift I. And let's right now make a mask. This is not perfect, so hit command I. So this is what we want. All right, so let's right now paint some of the areas back that I wanted where I wanted to show. Let's try to flow around. 40 pixels. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Something like this, all right. Of course, we don't want to affect this area, so let's paint in the mask, of course. So something like this will work really well. So you don't have like the weird arm we have right here. So let's simply just paint some of the areas back and some of the areas away where we don't want to see it. Let's hit save and let's see what that does. It immediately, it immediately updates the camera raw filter. So we will immediately see what has happened to the whole of the background. Right now it's updating and this is the update. So I think it's a little bit too intense. So let's see, maybe we can add a... All right, let's see what will work. Color Dutch add or screen, what is the difference? The difference is that it blends a little bit better. So let's see what this does. 
it's updating automatically. And I like this, I really really like this, I like this update, it's a lot better as before. So this is it guys, I hope you guys like this artwork, uh, I hope you guys like this tutorial, it started off pretty rough, but I think the end result is something that I can be very proud of. So if you guys want to follow, if, if you guys want the source materials, yeah I showed where I got all of mine, but if you want them be sure to hit the like in the, in, in the down below, because at 100 likes I will give away yeah my source material but if you guys follow the video you will see where I got them so yeah it doesn't really matter that much but uh, I hope you guys like this artwork if you if you did be sure to hit that like button be sure to hit that subscribe button if you have any questions for me be sure to ask them in the chat or in the comments down below because I love all the feedback and all the questions that I have from you guys and I will see you guys later